Hi everyone, Troy Richardson with Momentum Engineering. We're gonna teach you a few things about zipline braking. According to the ACCT, and this article comes directly out of the Headrush Technology ZAD white paper or emergency arrest device from 2017, January. They say the in excess of six miles per hour requires an emergency brake. But there's a problem. One, finding a six mile an hour speed limit and figuring out that you're that way all the time is inattainable because the weight of a rider makes a difference. Now look at this little short zip line here, 70 feet long. He's coming in seven, yeah, there's eight, no bounce maybe. There on that line. But we Going get him on 11. the other side. Now he's coming in at 11. There was a yeah. problem with that trolley. So that trolley's got some friction. I know the problems. I've done research on over a hundred accident investigations and what i found is yeah training is a problem but braking related issues is a bigger factor because emergency brakes can reduce accidents these braking related injuries have dominated the industry for decades and it's unfortunate because i stopped the problem at park city mountain resort in 2002 no braking related accidents because we use friction braking trolleys that are fail safe and a spring system as a backup, a three to one factor of safety. Now, these accidents don't lie. They tell me the stories of who's doing the most offending, who's the big players that are not stepping up, and it's unfortunate. Hi everyone, Troy Richardson here, Momentum Engineering. I'm here in my office. I'm going to show you some of the products that I have made and then some of my competitors' products that aren't doing the job. So the first product that I made was the Park City Mountain Resort Zipline Trolley. Now this big behemoth, 25 pounds, paid for Park City Mountain Resort in six months. Believe it or not, this Zipline Trolley has kept Park City Mountain Resort safe for over 22 years. Now the industry is not safe. You know, back in 2020, Cameron Anus, who is in this article later in this video, talked to us about the zipline accidents being six to seven per 100,000 in the year 2016. Now, to put that into context, half of them were braking related. So if we can stop half of the braking related accidents, let's do it. So my competitor makes a spring. And I used to make these springs. These are what we put on Park City Mountain Resort. But the spring wire makes a difference because the smaller the wire, the easier this spring compresses. So you have to have 10 of one wire diameter, 10 of another wire diameter, and so on based on your arrival speeds. Now, another problem in the industry that I see because I've investigated 100 accidents is this common denominator. Yep, a two-wheeled trolley. That is, that some people say it's a braking trolley. It's not. It's an acceleration trolley. You know, they're saying gravity braking doesn't happen. The problem with gravity braking is you come down and once everybody's at that lowest point on the cable, now the bigger, heavier riders have more energy, hence momentum engineering. Look it up. And so these trolleys, if they do not have the appropriate emergency brake that resets itself, it is causing they are causing a lot of accidents and more than they should. We should mandate these be eliminated from any zip lining that uses human beings because it is injuring people at the rate of now 15 per 100,000. Yeah, Cameron Ames, 15 per 100,000 is what he predicted in his article and you'll see that later in the video. But we have solutions. My website is ziplinebreakingsolutions.com. It's also zipsafe.org. We provide safer zip lines and components that will reduce accidents. So let's talk about what we did. As we started investigating these accidents, we realized that 25 pound trolley could not work in a zip line tour where the patron is dragging that 25. They wouldn't do it. So we had to develop a three pound trolley. So the difference between this trolley and those other trolleys, those dangerous trolleys that should be banned, is it has a wheel and a brake. And so by locating your zipline rider in different pin placements, this is a test trolley, so you're gonna establish your pin placements, 
by locating them in, in a pin place for your slope, all weights of riders come in very closely to the same. Try to do that with this trolley. Heavy weights of riders are going to come in two or three miles, maybe four miles an hour faster than a lightweight rider. Somebody with one third the mass because an 80 pound rider versus a 240 pound rider, no comparison. The energy is three times greater for the 200 pound rider. Now, like I said, the beauty about this one, 30 pound riders. When could you run 30 pound riders? Well, you can with these trolleys. You don't have to eliminate people. And if you want to build it up or beef it up, you could put a 600 pound rider on this and it'll still stop them safely. Now, another thing that we do, okay, so we send out that test trolley that you just saw, and we give you the pin placements that you need. For this one, there's one, two, three, okay? And so the cool thing is, the little brake here, if it was to fail, we have a fail-safe brake. This is a fail-safe trolley. It's a braking trolley that slows you down, and if that brake happens to fail, you have a backup. Safer solutions with ZiplineBreakingSolutions.com and Momentum Engine. So in the article just recently in 2023, Venture Park Ma in Magazine, Cameron Anus, he's a insurer at Granite Insurance in North Carolina. He published some information that caught my eye. And what it was, was he was talking about the number of claims and the errors and operator errors like you're seeing on this. And one thing he did say was that he predicted about 15 accidents based on the current numbers in 2022 based on over the course of statute of limitations. So there's a huge problem. These zip lines need emergency brakes and they don't have them. People are getting hurt and owners are getting away with it because they're paying higher insurance. Now, granted, your zip lines need to know what the arrival speeds are to ensure that you have an emergency brake. But different weights of riders come in at different speeds. Look at that. You know, it looks like a smaller weight of rider, but she came in at a different speed. And so mass makes a difference. The weight of a rider makes a difference. And you've got to pay attention to these problems Leave that are room. occurring in the industry. All right. Because braking related problems can be solved, but you need to know what your arrival speeds are. Get yourself a $150 bushnell speed speed well, gun, read it. which is about 98% accurate. Now granted, this guy's coming in a little slower because it's the slow trolley. And he's gonna, we're gonna check yeah, it again. Yeah, that was a lot better. Because we wanna check these so several times. You wanna know to the different weights of riders and how fast they're coming in on your zip line at different times of year. It's easy well, to pack a speed gun out and see, oh shoot, we're 11 miles an hour, we're above the speed limit, now we're Go at ahead. risk for a lawsuit. If she happens to get hurt, we're screwed. And we don't want that. Nobody wants to pay higher insurance, and surely I don't, oh. because I sell safety systems. I sell braking so systems that work. Want. Short zip lines are dangerous if they don't have a zip line braking system that's appropriately designed. Get one, let me help you, zipsafe.org. Thank you for watching.